Hi, my name is Sylvain Martel, and I'm the Oracle eBusiness Suite Apex Practice Director at Insum. Today I want to show you how to use an Apex application to display information from eBusiness Suite in a dashboard format with drill down functionality. So let's get started. We start by looking at our responsibilities from the user and click on the Apex Supplier Trend function, which is going to bring us to the Apex application. From there, the first thing we select the operating unit, which we have available, and select the supplier from the list of values. We can scroll down or type part of the supplier name for a quicker search. Then we select the supplier site and we have start and end date to fill. If we don't know how to enter the start date, we can click on the help link. In this case, we're going to use the date picker to select the month and the year for our start date. In this example, I'm using the list of value to select the month and the year, and I click on any day, since it doesn't really matter in this case. On the other hand, for the end date, I can type the month and the year for my end date and click the search button, and I get the data that I want. Those bar charts have been created using SQL statement, and the definition of this bar chart is a declarative one so any type of bar chart can be defined based on your SQL statement. They can be refreshed automatically, just as we saw. And over the mouse over each bar, give you a little bit more detail. If I click on one of the bar, I can go and switch to an interactive report, which gives me greater control and visibility on the data making that chart. Here I'm going to create a new report. So I'm going to call it new report, or my report, and give it a description. From that point, that'll become my own custom report for the data that I want to see. First of all, I'm going to select some columns that I don't want to see in that report, as for ID, promise date, and a few other columns that I don't really need at that point. I'm going to move the receive quantity a little bit upper in the list and then click apply to see the report the way I really want to see it. If I click on any of those titles, I can sort it by this column. This is all done part of the interactive report object. Next, I can select the number of rows that I can see in one screen. So if I select five, for example, then that this allows me to scroll back and forth but really, it doesn't make sense in this case, so I'm going to bring it back to 15. There's an option for downloading the records that I see right now. There's CSV, HTML, email, and PDF. If I click on PDF, the default PDF format shows up, and I can save it to my hard drive. Same thing for CSV, HTML, which is just an HTML view of the report. This HTML view can be emailed to anyone in your organization or anyone that really need it. CSV allows you to open up this data in an Excel spreadsheet. I can also sort or format this report anytime or anything I want. In this case, if I select by PO number and line number, I click apply, this report is now selected or sorted by PO number and line number. But that's not really what I want to make my analysis. So I can change this sort and remove the line number and change the PO number for the receive date. And this is more like what I want to see. All the receipt in received date order. Next, I want to do a control break by those received date to see if there's some sort of a trend 
on why I have 30% of early receive for that month. So if I click on receive date, this is going to give me a breakdown and a control break by each receive date. Now I notice that September 25th, we have received many, uh, many uh, items from the PO. I can do also highlights just to see if I have received any large quantity that might have impacted my report. So quickly here, from a user point of view, I can select to create this highlight for the large quantity, select a color, in this case I'm going to highlight in yellow, select the condition for which the highlight will be triggered. In this case, I'm receiving the receiving quantity. If it's a quantity greater than 10, I want to highlight that row. And there it is. Once again, this is all part of the interactive report, and there's not really anything the IT department needs to do in order to uh, uh, present that to the user. So I'm satisfied with this report and I saved it again, but there's always a way to come back to the primary report and see all the columns if I really want to. Now I'm going to go back to the main dashboard view and look at the expand trend. So I see that there's the same amount of dollars being spent for this supplier except for one month and I want to know what this is all about. Here I already created my own report so by default this is what shows up. Once again I can change the number of rows seen and I notice there's quite a few so I'm not too sure I really want to do that and scroll down. So I'm going to bring it back to a number that is more reasonable, so it's 25 per page. Let's go back to the main dashboard again and look at our expense category breakdown. I notice there's a lot of miscellaneous transaction happening. Again, I see the detail my own uh, report has been uh, populated as it is the default and I can do all sorts of action based on that report and that data. So we're back to the dashboard and we have completed our analysis. Then we can go back to the home screen and this concludes our presentation for now. If you want to know more about how Apex can help you build better extensions, please visit our website at www.insum.ca.